Ooh, let's have a cup of tea. Good morning and welcome to another video. So today we're filming with the Beast, the C63. And although this is a 10 year old car now, I know it doesn't really look 10 years old. I think it still looks, looks pretty good. Um, the, the brake discs are worse for wear as in they're perfectly functional. They don't need changing, but they look a little bit rusty. The top hats look rusty. So there is a fix that you could do. I just need to move the car first. <laughs> Because we're lifting the car, the first thing to do is always to chock your wheels. Now, if you're one of those people that like spending money on things that you don't really need, you can buy those plastic wheel chocks from Halfords, or you can just use some bricks. If you follow me on TikTok, you'll know all about my socket masking trick to stop yourself from scratching your lovely black alloy wheels. Notice how the Mercedes locking nut key has a rubber jacket around it. This is to stop the metal from scratching the wheels. This is my Powerflex jacking point insert, more on that in a minute. The C-Class has five jacking points, three at the front and two at the rear. So under here you can see there is a plastic moulding here made by Mercedes and bolted to the underside of the car. The Powerflex bush fits perfectly into that. The Powerflex insert is designed to fit into the Mercedes jacking point and give you a stable surface that doesn't move whilst lifting the car. I think it's a great idea over the folded metal that some manufacturers use, especially on cars with large plastic under trays. Never jack up your C63 from the rear diff. You'll be able to see those cooling fins sort of poking down, acting like a heat sink. These may bend if you put a trolley jack underneath them. They are not designed to take the weight of the rear of the car. I soon realised that as I jacked my car up from the only rear jacking point, I now had absolutely nowhere to put my axle stand. I decided to jack up the front jacking point and try and rely on the chassis stiffness to hopefully lift the whole side of the car, including the rear. And as you can see, it worked like a charm. Here's my position that I put my axle stand in for any of you looking at doing this. Of course, it would be great to have a round top on the axle stand and use the Powerflex bush, but I have four axle stands and they all look like this one. Lowering the car lifted the wheel at exactly the right height to allow me to remove the rear left wheel. You may ask, why didn't you use that Ryobi impact wrench to remove the wheel bolts, Dom? And the honest answer is that I haven't actually got any impact sockets and I don't really want to destroy my normal sockets with the insane torque that the impact wrench puts out. Now is a great time to inspect your wheels for one of the notorious C63 problems, which is cracked alloys. The 19s that I have on this car are renowned for cracking when you hit large potholes and, you know, the UK is full of them. So I like to have a look. Now is a great time to inspect the underneath of the car as this is an area that I don't get to see very often. It always surprises me how small the drive shafts are. Handling 600 Nm of torque, you'd think they'd be bigger. As you can see, being a UK car, there is a fair amount of surface rust on the brake top hats. Can tell that these brake discs have been changed because there's copper grease around there. That wouldn't come on from factory. As usual, I always try to tackle jobs with hand tools as I'm not in a workshop and time isn't that critical. Plus, filming it slows me down quite a lot. The next method is to wire brush the disc with a slightly unhealthy Ryobi cordless drill. You can tell it's unhealthy because of the whining noise it keeps making. There are two different types of drill bit that I used. One sort of cup design and the other sort of more of a wheel to get into the nooks and crannies of the disc. That's what I've managed to get it like now, but I've got this real problem here. You can see this bit's nice and shiny, and this is kind of rusty. So I need to get to this half of the brake disc and doing it from up here. It's kind of really awkward. So I'm going to jack the other side of the car up, and um, that should let the, the wheels spin. Fun fact, this is when you can find out if your car has a limited slip differential. If you jack up both wheels off the ground and turn one side, if the other side spins in the same direction, you have an LSD. This allowed me to rotate the brake disc and get the rust off the side that was closest to the caliper. Of 
I used some brake clean to get rid of all the rust, dust, that's hard to say, that I created and wiped this off with a paper towel. As you can see it looks pretty good after this process and a part of me did just want to leave it like this but I fear that over time this would return to its original rusty state. I'm also not sure if there was some sort of protective coating that was put onto the brake disc and in the process that I just did I could have just rubbed it all off. The next stage was to mask up all around the brake disc top hat essentially attempting to minimise any paint onto the friction surface of the disc. I've seen people who just completely spray the disc and to me this is kind of lazy and you can't be doing the brake pads any good getting them all gummed up with paint. Although it probably burns off pretty quickly. I also covered up the axle nut to prevent me getting any paint in there and this is just more of a cosmetic reason. I don't think you could actually do any damage by painting it. Now you may say, Dom, this would be way easier with the brake caliper removed and the disc off and my response would be, yes it would. However, the brake caliper bolts on the C63 are single use, I didn't order any, and they're about £6 each from Mercedes. As this is a really easy and cheap cosmetic modification, I don't really see the point in removing the calipers and causing more work if I can do a decent job pretty easily anyway. You can use anything, Britain's worst newspaper or a plastic sheet to cover up the brake caliper. Just make sure that when you tape it up that there are no holes as the paint, as I'm sure you know, is going to get everywhere. Originally I ordered black paint as I thought this would look super stealthy and kind of hide the brake discs but then I did some research online and saw that if I ordered a new set of brake discs they would come in a silver colour. If you follow my channel you know I love the OEM look and so I purchased a new silver VHT paint. VHT stands for very high temperature and is designed to be used on engines, exhaust manifolds and brake calipers. You can see that on the tin it also says no primer required and that's for those people who are commenting on this video saying that I should have primed the surface. A primer on this application would also have to be rated to withstand high temperatures, otherwise the paint system would just sort of wither, flake or burn off. Now on the tin it also said that the drying time was 10 hours and you know I just haven't got that sort of time so I aided the process along with my heat gun. It is high temperature paint after all. three coats later and you get to see the finished result. Now bear in mind that there might be a small amount of paint on the friction surface but this will be removed by the brake pads when I do the first drive. After completing this process on all four wheels here are the end results. Looking good as new if you ask me and if your brake discs don't need replacing it's a definitely a much cheaper option to get them looking fresh. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful, let me know in the comments if this is something that you're going to do on your car, and let me know what colour you would choose, the only limit is your imagination, and what paint you can find online. Until next time. Okay, so this is a lovely A35 that belongs to Mikey, and I just wanted to show you, this is obviously a much newer car than mine, look at the, uh, the brake discs there, that's exactly how mine look now, but obviously this is a brand new car, quite cool.